Let's talk a little bit about becoming an entrepreneur in this economy versus finding a job in this economy. Now, previous year, in previous years, we had jobs that were primarily manufacturing, shipping. We made stuff. We don't do that anymore. We have an economy based on the service industry. Now, you got to think about it. In this economy, you know, and count to me how many times I say economy in this video. That'll be fun. Uh, <laughs> basically, we have an economy which is based on services. It's a service industry. Now, whereas in a service-oriented economy, most of the people um, they get jobs in this in the service oriented jobs. What happens is it's you know of course working for other people, doing things for other people. Of course nowadays in this in this neglected economy, um, such that <coughs> excuse me, it is such that it's cheaper to clean your own fucking toilet than it is to hire somebody else to do it. It's cheaper to do your own laundry, it's cheaper to trim your own hedges, it's cheaper to do anything that you can do um, to save yourself money, you're going to do it. Those people who, you know, five years ago they had housekeepers, they don't now. Um, five years ago they may have had a butler, or they may have had a gardener, or a landscaper. Um, they're not there anymore. You see restaurants who, uh, you know, they might have had a staff of 10 or 15. Now they've got a staff of 6, but they're still doing the work of 10 or 15. Um, but then, of course, that's only if people eat at their restaurant. We had a, a very large number of people in the service economy. But now, because the economy is so neglected and so pitiful, you're not going to have those jobs. You're going to have a uh, hundred applicants for, well, for example, the co-op over here um, downtown. You have, I mean, I've had the manager tell me they get about two, three applications per day. So you figure that's about, <laughs> what is that, about, you know, close to a hundred per month. And you'll have a hundred applications for one position. One position, a hundred applicants. So any employer can be extremely uh, critical uh, or whatnot. Basically, he's gonna, the employer is gonna hire uh, the most skilled. You know, it's it's a surplus of high skilled labor who will work for peanuts because it's the only thing they can get. I know people with master's degrees working at shoe stores. <laughs> and that's just the way it is right now. You say, well, what about me? Uh, I'm not service oriented. I don't really like putting up with people's bullshit. Um, people are kind of, you know, not my thing. I'm not good at you know, feigning politeness or smiling and, you know, all that, all that ass-kissing, sucking up kind of stuff. Well, that's when you become an entrepreneur. That's when you find a need and you fill it. You try to become, uh, you know, your own boss. Like right now I'm recycling. I make maybe, maybe $10 a day. And that generally takes all day. It's not very profitable. But of course I need to eat. So at least it keeps me from having to uh, steal and all that kind of stuff. Of course, stealing and robbing would be more profitable, but that's not going to happen. So basically what I'm going to be doing today is uh, sending in a couple of things, well, doing a couple of things that I need in order to get myself on the path to entrepreneurship. I mean, let's face it, I'm a good speaker, I'm a good actor, I have a big heart, uh, I do care about people, I just don't put up with a lot of bullshit. So therefore, there are jobs there for me. Uh, I'm certain if I even had a little bit of money, 
<coughs> to invest in headshots or, you know, in a demo reel. I could easily get parts uh, in L.A., acting gigs. But, of course, that, that, that may be down the road a little bit. You know, I've got to get myself cleaned up and stuff. But in the meantime, I can do some other entrepreneurial things here in Humboldt. Uh, that will be, um, well, let's just say media, okay? That will uh, eventually become profitable and will allow me to have some degree of income to where I'm not sleeping on, you know, sleeping on the woods and whatnot. Because after all, um, you know, that, that's kind of what our society says. Society says, you know, if you sleep on the street or in the woods, you're, you're really kind of a zero. So I'm going to be working on not sleeping on the street. I'm going to be working on finding a place to live once I get the business up and running. So I hope this has been a, yeah, and also, if, if you're not, if you don't have a service industry job, and if you hate your service industry job, you know, do some, do some thinking and decide, you know, maybe entrepreneurship is the place for you to be. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. Some people, you know, doing a service job is right where they're supposed to be. Um, it's not for me. I've had so many service jobs and have just, you know, that have just been outright failures. You know, it's like, if you fail at something, why keep doing it? Find something else to do. Uh, so that's kind of the way that things work. But yeah, um, and also becoming an entrepreneur is a lot harder than it sounds. There's a romanticism to it, but as with anything that has romanticism embedded in it, um, it's sometimes a very difficult path, but it's definitely one worth taking. And if you don't succeed at first as an entrepreneur, try again, um, because you can always learn from your mistakes. Yeah. So I uh, hope this has been helpful for you, and uh, have a day.